overall, we took a look at the idea of the cardiovascular system. We learned its function as well as its components. We've learned some general information about the heart, how big it is, where it's located at, what it's surrounded by. And we've taken a look at the layers going from external, internal, going from superficial to deep. Now we're going to take a look at some of the components of the heart and we're going to start looking at the chambers of the heart. The heart has four chambers. We have left chambers and we have right chambers. We have chambers above and chambers below. We have small chambers compared to bigger chambers. So we have top, bottom, left, and right. They have names. We have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. The right atria is where deoxygenated blood passes on to the right ventricle. So the right atrium, its job is to receive deoxygenated blood. It's receiving the waste blood from the body. So the right atria is receiving blood from your toes and your nose and your ears and your elbows and your knees, okay? The right atrium is receiving used, abused blood. It's been used, it's been deoxygenated, it's full of waste, it's full of carbon dioxide. That's what the atria is receiving. The openings, and, and depending on your class, you might be quizzed specifically on what are the openings into each of these. So we're gonna cover those. The openings into the right atria include the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, the coronary sinus. These are all blood in routes. These are all how blood gets into the right atria. The opening that gets the blood out of the right atria is the right ventricle. So once again, openings into the right atria are the superior and inferior vena cava, the coronary sinus, the door out, the exit out of the right atria is the right ventricle. Speaking of the right ventricle, that's our next chamber, the right ventricle. Deoxygenated blood flows from the right atria to the right ventricle. The right ventricle forms most of the anterior surface and inferior border of the heart. Openings into the right ventricle include the right atria via something called the tricuspid. We will cover valves later on in its own video, so just don't worry quite yet about that. And it will let the blood out through something called the pulmonary trunk. So the way out is the pulmonary trunk, and we will have an entire series of videos on the blood vessels of the body. I just want to focus on the heart for right now. We'll get the other stuff later on. Moving to the left side, the left atria. If the right atria was receiving all of the deoxygenated blood, all the waste blood, all the blood that came from your toes and your nose and your elbows and your knees, et cetera, et cetera, then the left one is receiving blood rich in oxygen. This blood is full of hope. It's new, it's young, well, not necessarily, but it's full of oxygen. It's gotten rid of the waste. It's a brand new day for the left atria. It's ready to go. It's gearing. It's got the oxygen. Moving on. The openings into the left atria include the pulmonary veins. This is letting blood into the left atria. And the opening out of the left atria is into the left ventricle through something called the mitral valve. Again, we'll talk about valves in an entirely separate video. The left ventricle. Now, I'm a lefty. There's a, one out of four of us are lefty. Actually, I'm more ambidextrous, but I, I favor my left hand. And it's so nice to hear that left is going good, man. Left, left is powerful. Left is left proud. Yay, I'm, I'm, I'm lefty. Wait, that's not quite right. But anyways, the left side is the stronger side. It's massive, it's powerful. Why is the left side powerful? Because it's gotta get that blood to the toes. We've been talking about the toes. It's got to get the blood from up here down to your feet. Now, that's not a big deal if you're a hobbit, but let's say that you are an NBA player and you're just like 10 foot tall. That's a lot of space to go. So that imagine Shaq for a second, okay? Think of Shaquille O'Neal. That left side of his heart has to be huge because that man is very tall. And that blood's got to go from way up there all the way down to his toes. That's the left ventricle. Very powerful, thick muscles, oomph, pushing power.
The openings into the left ventricle include the left atria through the mitral valve, again, valves later on, and the aorta. The aorta is this big artery that's coming off the heart, and we will again look at the arteries, veins, and all that stuff in another series of videos. The walls of the left ventricle are usually two to three times thicker because of how powerful they need to be. So let's take a look quickly at the chamber summary. This is the stuff that you must know for your exams. So we have the right atrium, it's part of the pulmonary circuit, the oxygenated blood, openings going in are the superior and inferior vena cava, the coronary sinus, out going the right ventricle. The right ventricle, pulmonary circuit, deoxygenated blood, in from the right atrium through the tricuspid, out to the pulmonary trunk. The left atrium is part of the systemic circuit, oxygenated blood, pulmonary veins in, left ventricle, mitral valve out. In the left ventricle, systemic oxygenated blood into by the left atrium via the mitral valve and out through the aorta. In the next video, we're going to continue looking at some of the miscellaneous, but very important, other structures that we find within the heart.